During the next hour, we'll be showing you several advanced techniques with Deluxe Paint 4. We assume that you have some working familiarity of D-Paint. However, if you need a greater understanding of the program's features and tools, you may want to get Volume 1 of this video series, the Deluxe Paint 4 Video Guide. Some of our examples will refer to files that are included with D-Paint, so have them available if you plan to follow along. This example will demonstrate a variety of shading and coloring techniques. We will show one way to create a textured background and how to use shading to add dimension. Some text manipulation will also be done. Use the range requester to establish a group of grays. Select airbrush with the right mouse button to set its size. Choose a color within the gray range and select cycle from the mode menu. Draw to create an airbrushed gray area. Use the brush tool to pick up the airbrushed area. Once again, choose airbrush. Turn the menu and toolbox off and start drawing to fill the screen with a sandy pattern. Choose the brush pickup tool again and grab a brush that's the height of the screen but only one pixel wide. Select the line tool and choose smooth from the mode menu. To hold the brush by the corner Select Handle Corner from the Brush menu, or use the keyboard equivalents. Now, with the menu and toolbox off, drag the custom brush across the bottom of the screen. D-Paint will now slowly sweep across the screen, smoothing out the background. Turn the toolbox and menu back on, and select Rectangle with a single pixel brush and select color from the mode menu. We'll now draw a rectangle around the perimeter of the screen erasing the one pixel edge that did not get smoothed. Next we'll swap to our spare page. Using the polygon tool we'll create a shape that looks like a beveled edge and then pick it up as a brush. Using the J key, we'll jump back to the picture. For the next step, we'll need to choose a color that's within the gray range that we defined earlier, and choose Shade from the Mode menu. After turning the menus off, we stamp down the brush with the left mouse button to darken the bottom edge of the screen. After flipping the brush, we can stamp it at the top of the screen with the other mouse button, lightening the area. We perform the same technique on the left and right hand sides to complete our background. Now use J to swap to the spare page. Load a color font from your art desk. We will use bevel. In this example, We'll use the words first place. We'll pick the word place up and move it further on the screen, giving us more room. Now, using the line tool and white with a single pixel brush will make a small line that's about the width of a single letter. We'll use the brush tool to pick up our line. Now using the right mouse button on the curve tool, we bring up the spacing requester. Since the word first has five letters, we'll set the spacing to five. 
when we now draw our curve, we see there are five equally spaced lines for us to place our letters on. Using the brush tool, we pick up each letter one at a time and place it on the line. Using the fill tool, we erase each little line that the letter was placed on. We can pick up our whole word first as a brush and go back to our main picture. We'll position it and stamp it down. Now using the shade tool, we can shade an area underneath of our word. This makes the word first look as though it's hovering above the granite background. We'll now jump back to our spare page and pick up the word place as a brush. From the brush menu, we'll select bend vertical and arch our brush in the downward direction. We'll now jump back to our main picture and stamp it on the background. Using the same shading technique as before, we'll place a drop shadow under the word place. For the next step, we'll go to the spare page and clear it. We'll load a font called Chisel. We'll simply type a 1 and the letter ST. Using the brush tool, we'll pick up the letters ST and have them. We'll stamp the resized brush down next to the one. Using the brush tool we'll pick up the whole object. We'll click the current color in the selector with the right mouse button so that we can select the color of the darker part of the brush. Next we choose the brightest white from the palette with the left mouse button. Using the brush color swap menu item, a segment of our brush changes color. We repeat this process, selecting progressively brighter colors from the object and progressively darker colors from the palette. We use this technique not only to change the color of the brush, but also the apparent highlight. We can now jump back to the main picture and see the effect we have created. We'll position our brush and stamp it down. This completes our first example.